It was like I was trying to cram in all of the information as if I was having an exam. I definitely thought it was my fault and that I felt really alone, which can feel like you're going through life with the lights off. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Laurelian. If you are new here, hi. I'm a new mum to a six month old. I cannot believe we are here already. I cannot believe she is growing so, so fast. Little Miss Amelia. If you've seen any of my other videos, I have documented my birth story, my very first week postpartum because Honestly, that was a roller coaster. And I also did a video on my fourth trimester recap, just detailing everything of mentally and physically recovering. But in today's video, I thought it would just be fun to sit down and share with you some of the things that I've thought about over the past six months. Things that I wish I knew before having a baby. Maybe you already knew some of these or maybe you are in complete shock and surprise as I was, but we're gonna get into all the things about having a baby. Of course, this is from my own experience, but this is going to be a chatty video, so make sure you have all the snacks. So the first thing that I wanted to share, despite all of the emotions, all of the feelings, and all of the self-doubt that you put on yourself during pregnancy, especially in the last couple of weeks. And that is for when your baby is here and for when you're looking after your baby, you will totally surprise yourself. During my pregnancy, my anxiety, especially self-doubting myself, was at an all-time high. I would constantly worry about not being able to cope, just being an utter failure and not really knowing what to do because I'm a new mum, I've never done this before. And honestly, I'm not gonna lie, there are still days today, six months in, where I still feel like I haven't coped that day or I feel like I've really failed this day. And in actual honesty, even us without babies, we still go through those sort of days. I remember in the first week of bringing Amelia home, I was breastfeeding on one side, I was using a hacker and sort of trying to hold it in place on the other side and also eating my dinner with one hand, which you will definitely get used to doing things with one hand. I really, really wish that I just had a picture of that moment because when I look back, I just think that was incredible. You've, you've managed to do all of these things. And I know it might seem like the smallest of things to feel proud of, but I just think it's just those little small moments that can help make you a bit more confident, you know, and just make you feel good about yourself. Just remember, you will totally surprise yourself. My next realization is that parenting is a learn as you go experience. During my pregnancy, I remember trying to read upon everything. Like I said, my anxiety was at an all time high and what sort of calmed me down was reading pages upon pages upon pages of what to do when your baby does this or how to generally look after a baby. And although at times it did make my anxiety a bit worse because there was just too much information and when you start reading about one thing you come across something within an article say and you're like what the heck is that so then you then have to go and research that and you just get into a deep dark hole of research but my biggest realization over the past six months is that i was trying to think of every single possible situation that my baby and i would ever experience and i was also trying to come up with a solution, even though she wasn't here yet. It was like I was trying to cram in all of the information as if I was having an exam. But for me personally, as soon as she was born, it was as if all of that information just poofed out of my mind and I forgot everything. I felt like, in a way, how could I learn how to parent without Amelia actually being here? So. 
like I said, I feel like parenting is a learn as you go experience, you know? And for me, I just look back at the person who was worrying so much and saving all of the tips and hacks. And of course, like I said, that really, really helped for my anxiety and it sort of helped me mentally prepare. But I just wish that I just gave myself a break. The next tip is something that I personally battled with in the first three months, but particularly in the first week. And that is to not rush your recovery and to not have high expectations. Again, when I was pregnant, looking back, I felt like I was a little naive and I just didn't really understand, you know, having a baby because I would constantly, you know, watch other mums or again, read articles on how quickly people bounced back. And I felt like having that drilled into my brain just gave me the complete wrong mindset. And so because of that, I would constantly tell myself, you've got the first three months, you know, that first 12 weeks, and then you'll have your 12 week checkup and you'll just go back to normal, you know? You should be back to normal. You should go back to exercising, having a fitness plan, healthy eating, bouncing back generally, and just feeling like you again because it's been three months, surely that's enough time. Although I am not knocking, you know, getting back into exercise or healthy eating because both of those are so powerful in helping you mentally recover. But what I would go back and tell myself is to not give yourself a deadline. I mean, I don't know where the three months came from. I think it stemmed from the whole 12 week checkup. They'll give you the okay if you can have sex, get exercise in, you know, go back to some sort of normality. And I just think it's so, it can for, for most people be so unrealistic. My recovery took a hell of a lot longer than three months. I mean, I think towards the end of three months, could I then just start to walk normally? It definitely took me a very long time to just get back to my normal pace without being in pain. And six months in, I am still in physio. Being in that mindset of giving myself a deadline of three months honestly just made me feel negative about myself every single week that passed. I'd often get sad because I hadn't started working out yet because I do enjoy working out, you know, it makes me feel strong, it makes me feel good about myself. And looking back, I just feel like that definitely had a massive effect on my mental recovery. And so what I would want to share and what I wish I knew is to just give yourself a break. Take your time, slow down, you know, focus on what's gonna help you both physically and mentally without having all of these expectations and deadlines like I did in your mind because I feel like that's just gonna set you back from both physically and mentally recovering. So this next tip is something that we all do maybe on a daily basis and it's definitely something that I even struggle with today. As a new mum and as someone who became very vulnerable within that first two months postpartum, I definitely got hung up on, compa on comparisons. Although it's gonna naturally happen anyway, try not to compare your baby to someone else's baby. And I know that's like, well duh, but hear me out. When I first read about wake windows, nap time, and honestly looking at day schedules for an X month old, it made me become really anxious and overwhelmed. Of course, it's great to read upon those things, especially wake windows, but I think for me, it started to become more than that. I would start to question myself on why our routine wasn't the same as someone else's. And then it became to me thinking about why isn't my baby doing these milestones right now? And why is my baby crying so much? and why isn't she sleeping through the night? Every baby is different and that is something we shouldn't feel negative about. And it's definitely something that we shouldn't take as a representation as us as mums. So the next tip is something that I think we already 
know but it's just something that is great as a reminder and that is everything is temporary everything is just a phase over the last six months there has been so many changes from dealing with reflux and potential dairy allergy to completely going in survival mode on just three hours of sleep to then a somewhat perfect three naps a day definitely not perfect when you're in the midst of things your end goal for me personally was to do whatever it took for my baby to be happy and healthy even if it meant for me no sleep no food no nothing just being in constant survival mode trying to get through newborn life which can feel like you're going through life with the lights off and you often wonder to yourself is this it is this what it's going to be like forever but let me tell you it won't it will get better it is just a phase but also just when you think you've got the hang of things it's gonna completely change things change all of the time including the good times like in the early days when your baby will sleep on you those are definitely the good times and I cherish every single moment. Does she do that now? Hell no. No. I always tell myself, even today, just take one day at a time and somehow we've made it six months. And so I think it's important to say not to get too bogged down and obsessed like I did with routines because they are ever changing. And I think we got to about four months maybe the end of three months where we found ourselves in a natural routine and i think not having that restrictive mindset on certain things just helped me cope with the next situation that came up and so if you're currently going through a really tough time of course there is the form of sleep regression there is teething there is really bad reflux but just remember that it is temporary you can get through this you are doing an absolute amazing job and that it is just a phase so I feel like I've waffled on way too long so I'm just gonna do one more because I feel like this one definitely surprised me and shocked me and I definitely thought it was my fault and that I felt really alone and it's more of an experience I had but maybe you'll come to notice this or maybe you'll look back and think oh my god I had that as well and I didn't even realize. I think it was at the end of month one, maybe month two. I did mention it in my fourth trimester recap, but I went on to develop a breastfeeding aversion. And honestly, it nearly made me quit. I thought aversions were, you know, stuck within the pregnancy period of food aversions, of not wanting to have anything. Never in a million years did I think a breastfeeding ver aversion was real and it wasn't until months after when I spoke to my health visitor did they then make me realise that that's what it was. But I remember that every time I needed to breastfeed I would dread, I would absolutely dread it because I just felt uncomfortable, you know, and it got to the point where as soon as I would start feeding, I didn't want my hair to touch me at all. It had to be in a really tight bun because I didn't want it to touch me. My skin would start to crawl and I was just in this constant state of feeling like I was tensed up because I just, I just hated the feeling that, that my body felt. But on top of that, every time I did breastfeed, I would feel physically sick and i'm sure that's the release of the oxytocin that comes with breastfeeding you know the rush of hormones but i just felt physically sick so i would sit there and of course in the first few weeks you can be breastfeeding for up to an hour maybe even more and to sit there for that amount of time just being uncomfortable like your skin is crawling you feel physically sick you feel like you just don't want your hair anywhere near your skin and just feeling very uncomfortable as well as caught of course trying to breastfeed trying to master a latch and 
trying to be in the best possible position that you can be. It only lasted, I believe, for one to two weeks, so it didn't last long. And I'm so glad that I pushed through. I know there are a lot of different things that can happen to you breastfeeding wise. So my other piece of advice is to definitely always get the support that you're offered. When it came to all the midwives in the hospital and my health visitors and my doctors, honestly, I probably asked them so many times the same question, but I made sure that I got every support, bit of advice, help that I needed even if I knew what I was doing, just to sort of help with my anxiety and just, you know, to generally help me in the first three months because the first three months can be just an overwhelming time. Those are just some of the things I wish I knew before having a baby. Do comment down below if you have any that you wish you knew or any bits of advice that you would want to have heard when you were pregnant that you definitely live by today. If you have any questions, do leave them in the comments down below or if you want to go on to my Instagram, you can DM me on there as well. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please do give it a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't already and you've been loving my videos or want to see more videos, then do hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to click on that notification bell so you know when my next upload is going to be. But thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>